The Karabakh conflict that had begun at the end of 1991 turned into a war with the collapse of the USSR. Armenians had been planning for war for years, and therefore they gained the offensive advantage. Material and moral support of the Armenian lobby from foreign countries, a direct presence of numerous terrorist organizations in the war, created vast opportunities for the enemy. Armenian nationalists using heavy military equipment and power from the former Soviet troops located in Karabakh and Armenia committed Khojale genocide, Karagale and Agdaban tragedies. Political disputes occurring in Azerbaijan and lack of unified command in the Azerbaijan army created conditions for the occupation of Nagorno-Karabakh and seven surrounding regions by the Armenian military units. Hundreds of thousands of people were expelled from their homes. At last, in 1994, the armistice agreement was signed in Bishkek. Negotiations on the solution of the problem in a peaceful manner began. But negotiations that lasted for 26 years through the OSCE Minsk Group hadn't reached any conclusions. Patriotic War, Operation Iron Fist. The change of power in Armenia in the spring of 2018 created some hope for the solution of the conflict in a peaceful manner. But the new leaders of the aggressive nation began to take steps undermining the negotiation process. The inauguration ceremony of the leader of the so-called Nagorno-Karabakh Republic in Shusha, statements on the construction of the parliament house there, dancing of the Armenian leaders on the Jadur Dezu plain exhausted the patience of our nation. Moreover, new Armenian authorities began to settle Armenians from foreign countries on the occupied seven regions that was contrary to international law. The enemy was clearly stating that not only Nagorno-Karabakh, but these seven regions belonged to the Armenians. The Minister of Defense of Armenia, in his speech to the Armenian lobby in the USA, stated about the change of the strategy in relations with Azerbaijan, the way from negotiations to the war. New war, new regions. It meant that the new authority of Armenia was actively preparing for war against Azerbaijan. Diversion committed in July 2020 in Taus, situated away from Nagorno-Karabakh, was part of the stated new strategy. The enemy tried to capture strategic heights around Taus. These heights allowed control of the important international oil and gas pipeline crossing the territory of the Taus region. In August, the diversion intelligence group of the enemy was liquidated in Terter. Armenian officers leading the group were captured. All these proved preparations of Armenia for war against Azerbaijan. The assassination of General Polad Hashimov had been received in Azerbaijan with popular protests. Despite the pandemic, thousands of people held protests in Baku and other cities and regions. People fed up with the arrogance of Armenians took to the streets with the demand to punish the enemy. On September 27, 2020, early in the morning, Armenian military forces started shelling populated areas of Terter, Agdam, Fuzuli, and Jabrail regions with heavy weapons and mortars. Among the killed and wounded, civilians. Civilian objects were heavily damaged. It was the last straw. By order of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, on September 27th, our army struck the enemy with a counterattack. In the first days of the war, Karahan Bailey, Garvan, Horadis, Yuhar Abdurrahmanli, Ashagi Abdurrahmanli villages of Fuzuli region, Boyuk, Marjanli, and Luzgar villages of Jabrail region were liberated from enemy occupation. In the northern direction, strategic heights around Talish village of Agdara region, Sigoshan settlement, as well as Morovda Peak in Kalbajar were also liberated. With the purpose to force the enemy to peace, the Azerbaijani army began successful implementation of the operation Iron Fist. Since the first days of the war, UAVs disabled air defense systems of the Armenian army. 
Azerbaijani armed forces fought 21st century war, teaching the enemy class of warfare. As a result, Azerbaijan maintained air superiority, keeping the enemy under suppressive fire in the southwest direction on October 4th, our army liberated Jabrail and several villages. After clearing out several villages in the Khojavan direction, our army deliberately didn't prevent movement of the enemy in the depth of our military positions. But instead, our military units heading from Jabrail to the north surrounded the enemy's military group estimated at 12,000 people. The Armenian army troops had been dealt a heavy blow. Losing a large number of manpower, the enemy left military vehicles on the battlefield. Only in this operation, 27 enemy tanks were taken as a trophy. Dozens were destroyed. At last, on October 17th, the victorious Azerbaijani army liberated Fuzuli city, surrounding enemy units from Shabrail, Adrut, and Khojavan directions. The way to Zangilan and Gubadle was already open. With the successful Fuzuli operation, our army defeated the enemy both morally and psychologically. Neither defense echelons of several lines called impenetrable by the Armenian military authorities, nor ground and underground fortifications and bunkers built for 30 years could help them. Devastating blows of the Azerbaijani army completely broke resistance and power of the enemy soldiers. Soon after the Fuzuli operation, another military unit of the enemy was destroyed by our victorious army in Zangilan Gubadli direction. Zangilan was liberated on October 20th. The Badli region was liberated five days later. With these steps, the Azerbaijani army was carrying out UN resolutions that hadn't been executed for 30 years. Shusha operation was the masterpiece of the Azerbaijani army in the patriotic war. The enemy defended the city being the heart of Karabakh with 2,000 soldiers and a large number of military vehicles. They were sure that the fortress built by Panahali Khan was impregnable, but special forces of the Azerbaijani army led by General Hikmat Mirzaev entered the city not from the main road, but by climbing precipitous cliffs, the direction the enemy couldn't even think of. Our brave soldiers, equipped with light weapons, snuck behind the enemy line on four sides defeated the Armenian armed forces in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Military experts and world media that related victories of our army to the superior military vehicles and UAVs couldn't hide their amazement at the fighting spirit and skills of our army personnel. It was a great moral victory of Azerbaijan over the enemy. The liberation of Shusha on November 8th sealed the fate of the war. On the night of November 9th to the 10th, a tripartite agreement between Russia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia was signed. Military operations were ceased. This agreement made the victory of Azerbaijan and defeat of Armenia official. According to the agreement, the occupying country was obliged to withdraw its army from the territory of Azerbaijan, to leave Agdam, Kalbajar, and Lachin, and to open the corridor from Mehri to Nakhchivan. The Russian peacekeepers were deployed to the conflict zone. Thus, the patriotic war that had begun on September 27th ended with the victory of Azerbaijan. In the 44-day war, the Supreme Commander-in-Chief, People, Army, Unity turned into the Iron Fist and played the main role in the defeat of the enemy. All Azerbaijan citizens, regardless of religion or language, came together against a ruthless enemy. By the decree of the President of the Azerbaijan Republic, September 27th will be celebrated annually as the Memorial Day. The Victory Day will be celebrated on November 8th every year. On December 10th, 2020, a victory parade was held in Baku. The President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, and the President of the Republic of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and the Special Forces of the Armed Forces of Turkey participated in the parade. Today, atrocities committed by Armenian vandals for years are met on the liberated territories at every step. 
devastated towns and villages, ruined and desecrated mosques, destroyed historical and cultural monuments demonstrate the barbarism and atrocity of our enemy. Despite all this, today, large-scale construction activities are rapidly performed in Karabakh. Thus, Uzuli International Airport, the construction of which began in February 2021, is already ready to receive flights. At the same time, the reconstruction of Shusha City, the construction of new highways in all liberated territories, according to 11 various projects, as well as of the Fazuli Shusha Highway, or Victory Road, the straight highway from Fazuli to Shusha, are being held. The Republic of Azerbaijan has already started the implementation of smart village and smart city projects in the liberated territories. The first smart village project is being rolled out in Akale village in Zangilan region, while the first smart city project is being implemented in Agdam city.